welcome to another episode of Inside Out, where we talk about all things health and wellness. I'm your host, Juliana Rajamohan, and I can't wait to dive into today's topic. All right, so I have a little story for you guys. So you walk into a store or pharmacy and you ask for the morning after pill. The, the person behind you whispers to a friend and starts laughing. Suddenly you feel like everyone is staring at you and you feel ashamed. You feel like you committed a crime trying to get the pill and think, this is, is this even fair? So I think a lot of us probably felt this at some point, or maybe we might even encounter a situation like this in the future. And I think the problem with this story is not that we're wrong or we, or we should feel ashamed in a situation like this. I think the problem is how we view contraception in general. On today's episode, we're going to dive into knowing everything about emergency contraception, all the do's and don'ts. So quick fact, did you know that emergency contraception can be used for unprotected intercourse, concerns with possible contraceptive failure, incorrect use of contraceptives, or even sexual assault? So before we get started with all the questions that's probably running in our minds right now, let me introduce you to our guest today on today's episode, Ellie Webster. Hi, Ellie. How are you? Hi, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you for joining us today. So, Ellie, can you tell me a little bit about your work at Bridget Care and what you do here and how you ended up working here? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I'm a registered nurse, um, so I went to nursing school. My position here is the nurse supervisor, um, so I do a little bit of patient care as well as administrative duties and management duties, um, so a little bit of both. I moved here um, from the Missoula two years ago for this job um, and I've never really looked back. I love Bridger Care and I That's love what awesome. I do. That's awesome. I did intern at Bridger Care so yeah. I can kind of connect yeah. how awesome this place is. Well awesome Ellie. Well I can't wait to ask you all the questions, give our audience everything that emergency contraception is about and I hope everyone feels informed after our little chat here. Okay. All right Ellie I do have a surprise question for you. So are you ready for that? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> um, I always like adding like fun questions just so I can kind of see what my guests, like what their personality is like, what yeah. they do outside of work. So your question today is, what is one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? Ooh, <laughs> uh, that is a great question. What are people surprised to find out about me? Huh. Um, I think that I, okay, I think people get really surprised when I tell them that I'm from Libby, Montana. It's a really small, small conservative town in yeah. Northwest Montana. And I think I get like a lot of questions like, oh, you don't seem like somebody who would come out of Libby, Montana that's so um, interesting. and be working here and doing the things that you do. Um, oh my so God. I think that's what surprises most people. <laughs> where That's I was raised. Yeah. <laughs> so you you're from Libby. Yeah. Moved to Missoula, lived there, and then you moved here yes. to Bozeman. Yeah. 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 A lot of here and there, but yep, uh, all over Montana. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, all right. Are you ready to dive into the question? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. So our first question is: What is emergency contraception, and how old should you be to get it? Yes, so emergency contraception is either an oral medication or even an IUD, so an intrauterine device that can be used within a certain period um, after having unprotected sex in order to try and prevent an unintended pregnancy. Um, there's no age restriction on who can access emergency contraception, um, and certain methods can be purchased over the counter, while other methods are going to require a provider visit um, with a healthcare pr provider. Gotcha. So if someone uh, was underage, for example, like under 18, mm -hmm. can they still get um, like the morning after pill yes. after having sex? Yep. And they can also get an IUD as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you don't need parental con uh, consent nope. or anything like that? No. Nope. Well, that's good to know <laughs> for our younger audience. <laughs> Um, can you talk a little bit about the types of emergency contraception? Yeah, so emergency contraception primarily takes those two forms that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So either hormonal pills called Plan B or Ella is mm -hmm. the other one. And then also um, intrauterine devices. So with the 
Plan B and the Ella, these are oral medications that can be taken within three to five days um, after unprotected sex. Mm -hmm. And then the most effective form of emergency contraception is the IUD. Um, so the IUD does may or may not contain hormones depending on which one you choose for emergency contraception. Um, and these methods can be used for up to 12 years to prevent pregnancy should the patient desire. So gotcha. it's like a two for one. Yes. <laughs> and I think IUD has a 99% yes. efficiency, yep. right? You got it. And then you can either get the copper one or the hormonal one. And Correct. that's up to like what you desire and yeah. once you have that conversation with the provider. Absolutely, yeah. Both the Mirena IUD and the Paragard IUD mm -hmm. can be used as emergency contraception for up to five days That's after awesome. unprotected intercourse. Wow. Yeah. We're learning some new stuff here. <laughs> um, all right. How does the emergency contraception pill work? Like, how does it... Like, is it, does it take, like, an immediate effect, or does it, do you have to wait a little bit? Yeah. So, um, there's no waiting period. Mm -hmm. So, emergency contraception pills work by releasing a large amount of hormone called progesterone. Mm -hmm. um, the intent is to stop ovulation in order to prevent an unfertilized egg from encountering a sperm. Mm. Um, so, it's taken retroactively to prevent um, the sperm from fertilizing an egg. You can't gotcha. take it to prevent an unprotected intercourse like tonight let's yes. say yeah does that make sense yeah so okay it's after yes after the fact mm -hmm. um yeah and same with the iud's it can either um prevent that ovulation from happening mm -hmm. yeah so it's taking after i've also read um where people are concerned that sometimes taking like a contraception pill like um plan b is considered like an abortion pill because you're technically preventing a pregnancy what do you have to say for that I would say that statement is absolutely incorrect. Mm -hmm. um, and emergency contraception um, will do nothing to impact an existing pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, if someone has already ovulated, so if you've already ovulated or fertilization of that egg has already occurred, if the sperm has met that egg, um, and, or if you're already pregnant, emergency contraception will do nothing to change that or harm an existing pregnancy. Gotcha. And so like the window for it to work is within that five days. Yeah. So if someone were to take it towards that end of that window, does it work the same as if you were to take it before or like in the beginning yes. of that window? Yeah. Um, so the sooner the better. Okay. So ideally, uh, as soon as like if you have unprotected intercourse, you would want to give us a call and get in that day mm -hmm. would be the ideal situation and the ideal candidate. Um, there is a little bit different. So that five days um, is for Ella and for the IUD. Mm -hmm. Plan B is really after three days after the unprotected intercourse becomes way less effective. So that's really 72 hours for okay. Plan B. All right. Yeah. yeah, that's a good timeline to know. Yeah. Um, in what situations or how frequently should emergency contraception be used? Yeah. Great question. So the ideal candidate for emergency contraception mm -hmm. would have only had one instance of unprotected intercourse within the last three to five days. Okay. So not multiple. That yeah. would be ideal. Yes. Um, those who have had multiple instances of unprotected intercourse extended beyond that window mm -hmm. are still able to take emergency contraception pills. However, um, if they have already become pregnant or they've already ovulated in their cycle, the pill will be ineffective. Mm. Um, IUDs are not able to be used as emergency contraception if there has been unprotected intercourse within the previous two weeks prior to those five days. Okay. Because we need to make certain that you're not pregnant prior to inserting an IUD. Gotcha. Um, so... Emergency contraception is not a form of birth control mm -hmm. <laughs> and should only be used in emergency um, situations, just like it in the name. Yes. Um, the effectiveness of emergency contraception pills is entirely dependent on whether an egg has already been released and if ovulation has occurred in mm -hmm. your cycle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's, that's great information. <laughs> that's a lot of information. It's like we should condense all of that and put it in a flyer and yeah. like stick it all over. <laughs> Um, all right. If emergency contraception is used, how do you shift to other contraceptive methods? Yeah, so this is important. So many birth control methods can be started on the same day that emergency contraception is used, mm -hmm. but certain emergency contraception pills may interfere with hormonal contraception. Mm -hmm. So like um, birth control pills, mm -hmm. and there be, may be some lag time before your provider recommends starting a hormonal method. Got it. So, um, but if an IUD is placed, 
as emergency contraception that's basically like i said like a two for one yeah um after taking an emergency contraception pill it's always advisable um to follow up with a urine pregnancy test in about two weeks after okay. taking it to be okay. certain yes and do you usually perform like a pregnancy test before iud is placed Yes, in general. with all IUD insertions, um, we will do a urine pregnancy test here at Bridger mm-hmm. Care. Um, and if you tell us that you've had unprotected intercourse in the last two weeks, mm-hmm. we might um, defer for a couple of, like, until you've used a backup method like condoms or another form of birth control Got consistently it. for two weeks um, mm-hmm. so we can make certain that you're not pregnant. Yeah. yeah. So if someone is already on birth control pills and mm-hmm. decided to have unprotected sex and then they use plan B the next day, can they go back to their regular dose of have, taking that birth control pill on that same day? Yeah. So plan B, you can. Uh-huh. Um, but so it totally, so if someone has missed a birth control pill, um, it's advisable that they contact their healthcare provider mm-hmm. first because it may not even, emergency contraception may not be necessary. Mm-hmm. Um so it's Ella is an oral contraception pill um, that can impact hormonal contraception. So not gotcha. Plan B. It's that mm. Ella, and to get the Ella pill, you do have to have a provider visit mm-hmm. with Plan B that's available over the counter. And the reason that Ella isn't available over the counter is because we need to provide education that hormonal birth control may not be effective. Mm-hmm. Um, so your healthcare provider will review next steps if you come in for the Ella and you've missed a couple of pills. But basically, we recommend using barrier methods like condoms Mm -hmm. um, immediately following taking the Ella pill um, since the efficacy of hormonal contraceptions can be decreased after taking Ella for a certain period of time. I see. Yeah. So does Ella have the same active ingredient as Plan B or is it a little bit different? No, it's different. It's a different, so Plan B is a high dose of levonorgestrel mm-hmm. um, and Ella, I am, I'm going to botch the name, but it is a different um, medication altogether, gotcha. but they both work in the same way I see. Um, to prevent ovulation. Ella is a bit more effective, like I had mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be used for up to five days. Mm -hmm. but there's just that provider visit required to discuss if you're on hormonal birth control you might be needing to use barrier methods um, because it can decrease the efficacy of it or um, you could just wait and start them it just depends on your situation yeah so that people have two options yeah (laughs) (laughs) two pills (laughs) how safe is it to use emergency contraception incredibly safe (laughs) yeah that's all i have to say it's very safe um Yeah, there's not really many contraindications Mm -hmm. other than, like, if you've had multiple instances, if we're inserting an IUD, if you've had sex in the last two weeks Mm. prior to that five days. um, Very, very minimal side effects, if any. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I said, with Ella, potentially can affect hormonal birth control. Um, Otherwise, some nausea. Okay, yeah. yeah. (laughs) I think people can do... That's, that's like, an easy... Fix. Um, are there any interferences with birth control pills? Or I know you mentioned no contraindications with other yeah. other medications. Um, but can you? Use, I think I asked you this. Can you still use the morning after pill if you forget yeah. your birth control pill? Yeah, I think we just went over this. I think I answered this question basically. But so with Plan B, yes, you can. Mm-hmm. But with Ella, that's the that's, one where you would want to come talk with a provider and potentially. Um, use condoms okay. for a while because it can decrease the effectiveness of the hormone gotcha. birth control. Yeah. And to establish care here at Brid- Bridger Care, can you just call or can you yes. do a walk-in? Yes. Yeah, so if you are needing emergency contraception of mm-hmm. any type, Bridger Care really strives to get you in same day. So give us a call. Mm-hmm. If you walk in, that's fine too. And we will definitely try and fit you in same day, even if you want an IUD. Um, oh, the providers wow. here are really great. If you want, if you need emergency contraception and you want an IUD, we can we try and do what we can. That's awesome. That I'm day. so glad that you mentioned that because <laughs> I think one of the problems with the healthcare here and how it's set up is accessibility. It's mm-hmm. just I I know most people don't want to wait two three months to get an IUD yeah. or have someone to see so they can get the care that they need. So I'm glad yeah. that Bridge of Care is trying to make that effort to have accessibility across the board. Yeah. Um. All right, so does emergency contraception work for everyone or should there be concerns or 
Um, yeah. Is there anything else that we need to know about Good emergency question. contraception? Yeah, emergency contraception does not work for everyone. So there are several situations in which emergency contraception will not be effective. Mm-hmm. So a per- if a person is outside of that time frame and has had other instances of unprotected sex, if they've already ovulated or become pregnant, mm-hmm. it's not going to work, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Additionally, a person's body weight does need to be taken into consideration when choosing which emergency contraception pill to use okay so unfortunately plan b um the efficacy really appears to decrease with increasing body mass index Mm -hmm. of like 25 to 26 now a bmi of 25 to 26 is not very high yeah that is not a very high bmi Mm -hmm. so we will ask you questions sometimes height and weight to determine Mm -hmm. what emergency contraception might be best for you if you do call and ask to speak with a healthcare provider about it um plan b is just the least effective method of Mm -hmm. um think versus ella Mm -hmm. or an iud So we really try and get folks in um, if they're willing to come in for a visit and take Ella if they want to do a pill Mm because it is just more effective. Mm -hmm. Um, But the great thing about Plan B is you don't need a provider visit and you can get it over the counter. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just something really important to keep in mind is that a BMI of 25 or above, it's going to really decrease in effectiveness. Okay, that's very good to know. And is that the is that the case with IUD as well? Like, do you determine the weight and height before you get an IUD? No, nope, that's nope. a great question. No, nope. doesn't matter for an IUD. Okay, <laughs> again, another good alternative. <laughs> Lots of alternatives in this podcast. I love it. <laughs> All right. So, um, how long does emergency contraception protect a woman from pregnancy? Yeah. So, emergency contraception pills do not protect against pregnancy for any period of time after mm-hmm. they're taken. So, I think we touched on this at the beginning, but they are only taken retroactively um, for protection for unprotected sex within the last three to five days. Mm-hmm. So, um, there is a rapid return to fertility that's expected mm-hmm. after taking emergency contraception. Um, however, if an IUD is used for emergency contraception, then protection can last up to 12 years. Paragard's good for 12 years, yeah. uh, and it's over 99% effective. That's so. awesome. <laughs> Love those IUDs. Yes. Um, I do have a very sensitive question um, for people who might have experienced sexual assault or rape. Um, is there like a confidentiality policy that's placed in Bridget Care for people um, who have experienced those to get the care that they need? Yeah, so everyone at Bridger Care goes through HIPAA training and confidentiality training. Mm -hmm. Um, Your care here is completely confidential. Mm -hmm. Every patient seeking care here has that right under HIPAA Mm -hmm. laws. Um, And you can request certain providers if you have an established care with a provider and you feel comfortable um, with a certain provider, that's absolutely acceptable as well. Um, But yeah. That's great. Everything I think is that's completely a completely confidential. Yeah, yeah. So that's the gold standard. To <laughs> keep things confidential when it needs to be awesome. Well, um, I, I have one last question. How do we get, where can we get um, emergency contraception? Does Bridget Care have emergency contraceptive pills here? Yes, so Bridger Care does have emergency contraception, and it's often cheaper here than most other places. Mm-hmm. Um, you can give our front desk a call if you need um, or want to discuss emergency contraception. We can discuss options and financial factors, but over-the-counter plan B at Bridger Care here costs $10. $10? So you could walk right in here and get $10 plan B over-the-counter. Um, we also offer a sliding fee scale for mm-hmm. emergency contraception visits um, to all of our patients that's income driven so this means that your emergency contraception could even be free of charge if you have a visit Mm. Um, you can also get emergency contraception at most pharmacies um, over the counter in town cost fluctuates um, and if you opt for an intrauterine device or an IUD at Bridger Care um, we strive to get those patients in like I said same day yeah um, for those devices that's awesome so if someone scheduled like an annual visit and they Mm. wanted to pick up like a um, a plan B or yeah. Ella, can they still pick it up after their visit? Yeah, so we could hand it to them at their visit. Oh, perfect. Just in the office. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and how, what does the shelf life look like for contraceptive yeah. pills? So all emergency contraception pills will come labeled with an expiration date mm-hmm. on the box. Um, the medication shouldn't be used after that time frame, mm-hmm. but every box of emergency contraception pill will have an expiration perfect. date on there. Yeah. For you. 
Well, that's awesome, and I'm so happy that Bridgecare offers a cheaper alternative to the same pill that you can get across town. So if you're local, if you live in Bozeman, if you're driving through Bozeman, feel free to check out Bridgecare. You can get in on the same day. They will try to do that, and you can still pick up a emergency contraceptive pill that's probably half the price compared to other <laughs> pharmacies around town. So don't miss this deal. Um, well, that concludes our episode, and I hope you all found it very insightful. Thank you, Ellie. This was so great. It was lovely chatting with you, and you have an extensive amount of knowledge on this, <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure your patients definitely love you. So, oh, Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so glad that we're talking about this and getting yes. it out there in the community. Mm-hmm. That's exactly uh, my goal for this podcast. Um, I just want people to be more um, informed then that way they can make more informed decisions i do have one request for all of you listening today please don't feel ashamed getting the care that you need and don't put others in a situation where they feel ashamed being open and receptive to the right information can ease our minds during difficult situations so please 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 don't feel ashamed if you're looking for care anywhere um even if it's in the u.s even if it's somewhere else make sure you have the right information and i hope this podcast gives you that Um, courage to ask the right questions even during difficult situations and I also want to give you guys an opportunity to be compassionate to yourselves and to others who might be in the same situation so if you like this podcast please subscribe to keep to keep us up with all these hot topics and we have a lot more awesome topics uh, coming up so feel free to email us with any questions you might have or any topics that you would like us to cover we would love to take your recommendations and put it into a podcast and share it with you guys so thank you again for tuning in to today's episode and i can't wait to come back with another one to share next time until then this is juliana signing off on inside out